thanks, uh, Ross. Good evening. Uh, first of all, just just want to uh, just offer my my sincere condolences to the Boyd family. I'm sure most everyone has has uh, you know heard about uh, the passing of, of uh, you know, Taj's dad. And, you know, uh, obviously, I've got a long relationship with the Boyd family, and, and Tim was a good man. And uh, you know, heart just breaks. Uh, it's, it's a Life is hard. And these are things that we all deal with, uh, for sure, in our lives. But you know, it doesn't make it easy. And uh, you know, Taj was like a son to me. And just, just, you know, my heart is heavy because you know I just I know uh, the hurt that he's dealing with, and his brother, and his mom, and, and just the whole family. So uh, you know, just ask for the friends and family to to pray for the boys. And, uh, you know, I know good Lord's uh, got his arms around them and will comfort them, but just pray uh, uh, that everyone will, will uh, you know, cover them in prayer as well. So, uh, with that, open up for questions. Hey, Coach, it's Trevor Gross from SteveTigers.com. Um, is this perhaps the most challenging season you've had even beyond all the COVID stuff. We know that, but how challenging that is, but just with all the injuries that you've had this season. Oh, it's no question. The most challenging season, just, you know, I mean, we're in uncharted territory uh, uh, every single day, but you know what? Hey, listen, I, I just embrace the challenge and uh, it's, it's, uh, something that everybody's dealing with. I always say, it's like playing in the rain. If it was only raining on one sideline, we'd have a problem. But, you know, everybody's dealing with the same challenges. Uh, but, uh, you know, between everything out there and, and injuries and things like that, it's, you know, I'm proud of our team. I mean, it's amazing. I mean, we if you'd have said, you know, in the summer that we were going to deal with, we were going to have our starting quarterback for a couple of games. We, we were uh, going to have the type of injuries and, people unavailable and things like that. But yet here we are seven and one and, and uh, in control of our destiny in, in November. Uh, you know, I'm super proud of our guys, uh, super proud of our team, our staff. Uh, and, uh, you know, I think that you know, we're, we're where we hope to be uh, as far as, you know, in the hunt to win this league. Because uh, that's, that's what it's all about for us. And, um, you know, we're on track. We've got to take care of the, the task at hand and, and uh, don't have any room for error. So uh, it's the best of one uh, every day. And, uh, but you know, we've had, uh, we, we certainly have had to step up and accept the challenge, you know, all year. And these guys have done an amazing job of that. I don't have any doubt they'll continue to do that. Hey, it's, it's David Hood with Tiger Net. Speaking of those injuries, do you, you feel a little bit better about maybe some of those guys that were day-to-day uh, -day? you know, and, and their chances maybe of playing this week? Uh, yes, yes. I mean, we've got a couple of guys I know are going to be out, but, uh, you know, and, and who knows what happens between now and, and Saturday morning. I, I don't even worry about it anymore. Uh, I just, you know, let's see who, who, who's ready, who, who's available, let's go play. Uh, but uh, I do feel a lot better about several guys uh, that, you know, are, are definitely in that day-to-day -day category. And, and so we're hopeful. Uh, but I will say this, we're really trending in a positive direction. We've dealt with a lot. Hopefully we, we've got the worst behind us, but we are trending in a good direction with some of these guys. Like a guy like Rook, for example, uh, he has really, really made great progress. And, you know, we, we think we're going to get him back uh, you know, by the VTech game. That would be a big shot in the arm for us. Uh, he's a guy people don't know a whole lot about. So we've got several guys that, that I feel like are, are really, really close. Uh, Skowski is, is going to be out this week. But man, he's, he's really doing well. Uh, you know, Frank is getting better. So we've got, we've got uh, and then a bunch of other guys that I think you know, are listed as day-to-day -day that hopefully we'll be able to go. I'm sorry if you've asked, been asked this before, but do you feel like the, the, the lack of – true summer conditioning and being able to run up and down the dam and the 6 a.m. mat drills and the lack of spring practice is hurting every team across the country, not just Clemson, that 
it's such a physical sport that that lack of being there, you know, full on during the summer has, has begun to hurt. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, we've had, we probably had more opportunity than most. We did have nine spring practices. We had our mat drills and, uh, but, you know, certainly not having the ability, you know, the second half of March, all of April, uh, in May and June to train like we needed to. I don't think there's any question that, uh, you know, that's, that's affected many, many teams, but, you know, I, I don't, I don't know that that's, you know, a reason, you know, or whatever. Sometimes that's just kind of how the ball bounces for you. Uh, but Hey, we're, 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 we're battling and, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're growing as coaches. We're growing as a team. Uh, we've got a lot of guys that, that have, have, uh, gotten a lot of opportunity and probably will continue to, to do that and so you know it just is what it is I don't, I don't really spend any time evaluating all of that I mean uh, I think, you know, again you know, some years you just, it's just a little more challenging than others when it comes to injuries but um, you know we're, we're figuring out a way and that's that's what matters hey Dabo it's Josh from the posting um, just, of those guys who have been banged up on defense, are there any aside um, from Tyler and Skowski who you'll for, you, you know for sure you'll be without uh, this weekend? I think, I think you said the only guys I know for sure I'm gonna be out. Uh, yeah. Aside from Davis, yeah, for sure, for sure Skowski and Frank. Um, you know, other than that, you know, everybody's got a chance to play. Coach, it's Trevor again. Um, you said back in camp that, um, you know, you were, you were looking at the inexperience. You knew you were going to have a lot of inexperience on that second team offensive line coming in uh, to the season. Those starters, they, they've averaged well over 80 snaps in four of the last five games. Is that, that, that seems like a lot. Is that abnormally high? And, and how much of a, of a toll does that take late in the season? Well, we want to get 80 plus snaps a game. That's uh, always a goal for us. And, um, uh, but, you know, we definitely have always spread those snaps out a, a little bit more. I mean, we've had some, some years where it's been similar to this, but, you know, last year was, was awesome because, you know, we were able to roll a lot of guys and, and, uh, and keep the snap count down. But we've had some – hey, we've had a tough schedule, man. We've had some, some challenging games, and, uh, you know, those guys have, have hung in there. You know, that's an area we've been pretty fortunate uh, is that first group of OL – being able to, to keep them, uh, you know, out there for them to be able to hold up, play as many snaps as they've had, had to in some, in some, in some tough physical games. So, um, you know, we, yeah, we knew coming in that was the area in our team where uh, we didn't have a lot of room for error from a, from a knowledge and an experience standpoint. But we've made progress. We've made a lot of progress that hasn't shown up yet uh, to, to outside people. Uh, but, you know, I think that, you know, we're, we're – building. Uh, we always build to this time of year and uh, we're way better now than we were when we started. And if some of these guys had to go in there and, and get it done for us, I feel a lot better about it. I mean, we, we don't have anybody that's ready to be a starter for us yet. You know, Walker Parks is not far away. He's a, he's a really done well with his opportunity. Uh, you know, Trotter is, is, is coming on for us as a, as a red shirt freshman. Uh, you know, T.O. Has, has made some progress, Mitchell, uh, you know, so we're, 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 we're getting there. Taekwon is still learning. He's got a lot to learn, transitioning to the new position. But, you know, we like the guys. Uh, but, you know, some of these games have just worked out where, you know, we just haven't had as much opportunity to get some of those guys some, some game reps. But they're getting them in practice, I can assure you. Dabo, Larry Williams here. Uh, continuing on the offensive line, uh, second-team offensive line theme, Hadn't asked about Blake Vincent in a while. I'm assuming his knee just hasn't been um, able to get back to to where to where he y'all want it. Yeah, yeah. The knee the knee is a lot better, but you know he's a guy, he's one of those guys that uh, you know I would say is the epitome of what David was alluding to earlier. Uh, you know because he he just he's just not where he needs to be strength wise overall uh, because he you know was have him back from a knee and not even really train, you know, in a while. Uh, so he's got plenty of knowledge, knows what to do, but his functional strength isn't where it needs to be. So he's improving. And uh, so that's kind of been, he's, he's progressing through the season and doing what he needs to do. Uh, 
but that's the biggest thing that's held him back. I mean, it's not knowledge. It's just, it's just he's he's not quite where he needs to be from an explosive uh, strength standpoint. Davo, it's Anna with Clemson twenty four seven. I think Justin Maskell has started the past four games um, or so over KJ Henry. Is there anything there that he's done to kind of earn that and that earn that um, starting role? And is that still in your eye a competition every week? Yeah, I don't even keep up with it to be honest with you. Uh, you know, I mean that's a that's kind of a coin toss every week with Kate with uh, with Ski. So uh, I know both. I trust both those guys. Both those guys are starters in my eyes. You know, who runs out there first? I, I don't really care. Uh, they're both going to play. You know, every week they're going to play right about the same. You know, it could change week to week, uh, but you know, both of those guys are starters in my eyes. Uh, yeah, it's not something I even really pay much attention to at that position with those two guys because I I know that both of them are going to be ready, both of them are dependable, both of them are committed, and uh, both of them are going to play a lot. So uh, I just kind of leave that up to to Ski. Hey, Coach Lawton Swan with Clemson Sports Talk. I know in the past you guys have used headspace and things like that, but, you know, just the mental health of the players with the season and the way things are going. Um, have you had any special speakers or anything to kind of, you know, just keep those guys' spirits up as they kind of deal with the pandemic and the different life on campus, et cetera? Um, yeah, we, we, we've had a several bunch of speakers, uh, you know, several guys that have, have, have zoomed in, um, you know, throughout the fall, we had speakers in fall camp. We, we've had speakers, uh, uh, you know, throughout. We had you know, Sam Macho last week. We've had Steve Young. We've had, you know, multiple guys uh, that uh, you may know or you may not know. And, uh, you know, so we, we, we've done all that stuff. But these guys, you know, the biggest thing, it, it comes down to, you know, us here, you know, and our daily interactions with them. I mean, you know, the, the mental health of, I mean, our guys are fortunate because we, we get to do something that we love to do, even though there's isolation and there's just fatigue when it comes to Zoom and, and looking at a screen and, and all that stuff. Um, uh, online classes, I mean, there's just a lot of fatigue. Uh, so I, that's probably the, the case for everyone, you know, and, and for people who don't have, you know, the resources here and the, and the fellowship that we do get to have. I mean, it's... And it's, it takes a toll, I think, uh, from a mental standpoint. I worry about a lot of young people out there and the challenges that they're having with isolation and, and all this stuff. But, uh, you know, our guys are doing a good job. And, again, it just comes down to our daily interaction with them and, and, uh, you know, and just just having appreciation for the opportunity that we have and enjoying, enjoying each day and uh, focusing on what we control, uh, not getting distracted by – what we don't control or worrying about things that we have no control over. Uh, let's, let's, uh, you know, just enjoy each and every day that we get. And I think our guys have done a great job of that uh, all year. Yeah, well, this is Larry again. Um, just curious for your evaluation, uh, eight games in on um, Bentley, McGuire, and uh, Patterson. Yeah, I mean, three – Good players, all basically redshirt freshmen. I think Kane, Kane played last year, but technically he's a redshirt freshman. Uh, and uh, all of them playing special teams, have done some good things there. You know, Kane's had an interception. Uh, you know, uh, Monte's had a couple of nice plays. And, you know, same thing with McGuire. So just three young, talented guys uh, that, that are still, you know, learning and growing uh, into the into the role and, and into the players that, that uh, you know, Brent, wants them to be and I want them to be and uh, love those guys man they're they're the right dudes it's David again I found it a little bit interesting I think you got asked two questions about Florida State yesterday Mike Norvell didn't get hardly any Clemson questions uh, there's a 35 point you know point spread in this game. But do you think Mike is is the kind of coach that can bring that program back? And do they have, you know, the pieces in place to once again become a power in college football? And, and is it maybe a little bit easier at a place like Florida State than maybe some others? 
Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, Florida State's a, a national brand. I mean, they're they're in a in a, in a state with, I mean, Florida, Georgia, Texas, California. You know, I mean, doesn't get any better than that uh, when it comes to you know. Uh, I don't know if I said Georgia or not. When it comes to you know your home state recruiting, I mean, you got a recruiting base that's unbelievable, and, and obviously they've got a an incredible brand and a great tradition. Um, so, you know, I mean, they, that's what they hired him to do. And I don't, I don't, I don't really know Mike well. I just know he's had a lot of success wherever he's been. So, um, you know, history says that, yes, he, he, he's going to be very successful there. Um, you know, so, and I can just tell you, watching them, you know, from a totality standpoint, from, from beginning to where they are now, they've gotten better and they're improving. You know, I don't, they're not, play, they're not worried about their record. They're worried about building a program and getting better. And, uh, you know, we'll have, we're going to have to play well. I mean, these guys are competing at a high level. They're playing with a little more discipline. They're, they're better positioned. Uh, they got a bunch of young guys up front that are, that are trying to compete. And uh, they got a young quarterback that they can really build around. Cause this kid is, a, as I said the other day, he is a problem. Uh, they've got, I mean, 13 and 11 at the end are as good looking guys as you're going to see. So they got a lot of pieces. They got plenty of skill. I uh, love their backs. I mean, big, strong, tough runners. Uh, so, I mean, I think that they're with making progress and maybe not on the school board yet, but sometimes, you know, you're, you know, as a coach, you're making a lot of progress. You maybe, aren't, maybe aren't getting the results on the school board yet. Uh, but if you, if you stay the course on some of the core ingredients that it takes, and eventually you'll get that. But, uh, you know, it's – from my perspective, man, we just – I got all the respect in the world for Florida State. I've had my butt beat down there many times and, uh, and here as well. You know, this is a I – don't, I don't care what their record is. Uh, these guys are on full scholarship and highly recruited guys, and, uh, and I, I got great respect for their program and uh, for, for, you know, how we have to play uh, to win this game.